Hi everyone, welcome to my new YouTube channel and part one of my very first video paint along series. Now for those of you who don't know me, I am a huge Space Wolves fan. So I thought it would only be fitting that I start my channel by painting my favorite Space Wolf character, Ragnar Blackmane. I've waited a very long time for Games Workshop to redo Ragnar. So thank you Games Workshop for making this old Space Wolf fan very, very happy. But now I'm excited. Ragnar Blackmane has crossed the Rubicon Primaris and he's back with an amazing sculpt by Darren Latham. So let's get started. Right, so here he is in all his glory, Ragnar Blackmane on his sprue from the Prophecy of the Wolf box set. As you can see, he comes in quite a few pieces, so we better crack on and start removing these from the sprue. Now for this, you're going to need a pair of clippers and a sharp hobby knife. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you by making you watch me remove all the parts. So I'll be releasing a series of Hobby Basics videos that will cover all this kind of thing for anyone new to the hobby. This also means I don't have to repeat how to remove miniatures from sprues and clean up an undercoat on every single paint along that we're going to be doing. So I'll get on with removing all the parts and I will speed this next bit up. Okay, so once you've removed and cleaned up all the mould lines, uh, it's time to start thinking about the sub-assemblies. Now you can always assemble the whole miniature if you want to, but I always like painting miniatures in a few different pieces. That way I can be sure that later on I'm going to be able to get the paintbrush to all those little details. So in the Prophecy of the Wolf box set, uh, you get a really handy assembly guide, really nice and clear. I've had a quick look through and I think we're going to get away with two main sub-assemblies. And then a few individual pieces. So we will take the legs. And the greaves. And there. Okay. And the foot. And the base. Okay, so that is one sub-assembly. And then the second main assembly will be the torso. So you get the front and the back of the torso. I think we, that will also include the big section of the cloak and his outstretched hand. Now, so that will be the main sub-assemblies, which we will glue together now. Move those off to the side. And then that leaves the backpack, his shoulder pad, frost fang, his head, and the remaining parts of his cloak. I think we're going to paint separately. Now the plastic detail base that comes with the figure is so nice. I want to actually keep that uh, so I'll try and incorporate it somehow into the rest of the base that I create for it. The other reason why I wanted to incorporate this into the display base I create is because I'm quite lazy and if you look the bottom of Ragnar's foot is actually sculpted onto the base and if I didn't want to incorporate this base I'd have to do a little bit of cutting and repair work which I don't want to do because I've waited so long to paint this miniature I want to crack on and actually get the painting started. So to start gluing the sub-assemblies you're going to need some of this stuff which is uh, plastic glue. Um, we're going to start gluing the two sub-assemblies together. So we're going to start with the legs. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Okay so don't need very much glue. And we're just going to start gluing these pieces together. 
Ahí está. Get some glue on that. Try and keep this in focus while I'm doing this for you. Okay, so that's that piece glued. Okay, so that's one leg and foot. It's quite a good grab on these uh, on these plastic glues now, so it doesn't take much to actually grip the piece. And then what we'll do is glue that piece. Oops. Okay, so this is the piece that's not been glued. So that's the first sub-assembly that I think we can get away with. Now the next piece will be to assemble the torso and his hand. Okay, so same thing again. Just make sure that we're applying glue to the correct piece. Really bad focusing. My camera work will improve over the videos, I promise. There's quite a lot to pick up. Okay. That. That's that torso apply. Okay. And that's the second sub-assembly. Pretty easy to put together. No dramas so far. There's always time. Right, so now those two have been stuck together, what we need to start thinking about is the uh, how we're going to be holding these pieces while we're painting. You don't want to be getting your fingers on your lovely painted miniature, damaging all the hard work. So... For years, I've always liked to pin my models uh, and use an old pin vise. You can see it's uh, got quite a lot of undercoat on the top of there. Uh, so what I'd do is I'd use some paper clips. I've had these for probably about 15 years and they've still got plenty left, as you can see. Um, so what I'd do is I'd use these paper clips as pins. They're very good. They nice and easy to bend but they're also quite strong and then what you do is you pin them into the part put the other end in your pin vise tighten it up let me show tighten it up like that and you're able to hold the base of the pin vise with your finger and rotate the model as you're painting really really handy way um, like I said I've probably been using that method you can see the very worn on the handle um, I've probably been using that for the last 10-15 years as well um, but looking at these models 
Um, some of these details are quite fine. If you look at the uh, hand on this sword, which is where I would normally pin, probably pin into that hand there. The details are very, very fine and you're not going to be able to drill that very easily. So I'm going to use uh, a much quicker and easier method that I recently picked up from watching uh, one of Darren Latham's Masterclass series videos. And what it, what he uses is uh, plastic flight stands. And these are some left over from my last painting project. So what, what you do is you temporarily glue the plastic parts to these flight stands with super glue so that you can uh, quite easily snap them off uh, once you finish painting them and you're ready to assemble. If you use plastic glue it would melt the two pieces together and it'd be quite difficult to remove them. So I think this is probably the best method that we're uh, to use on this project. Okay so let's show you how you go about attaching the sub-assembly to the flight stand. Okay so you take your piece and you're going to put a little bit of super glue on the top of that flight stand like that and then you're going to find a convenient place for you to attach that flight stand to that model so in, in a way that it's going to be disguised later on so it doesn't damage any detail and you just got to hold it there for a little while so we'll cut away now and then come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all assembled. When the glue is dried uh, this is what your sub-assembly will look like. Now I've gone ahead and glued the second sub-assembly to a gaming base um, and what I'll probably do is attach that to painting handles with some blue tack from Games Workshop. Really, really easy to hold. Um, fix that there and that's probably how we're going to paint that one okay so here are all the pieces and sub assemblies glued to their temporary supports and we're ready for undercoating i'll cover undercoating in a separate video i usually work off a black undercoat but you can use whatever color you want it'll just mean that the end result is slightly different to uh, my finished miniature but not a big deal so let's get these undercoated and then we can start thinking about the color scheme Okay, so that's all the pieces undercoated, and I've left them to dry. I like to usually leave them about 24 hours before I start painting onto the undercoat. So, with that all done, the final part of this video, and the most important part, is to start talking about the, the colour scheme. Now, I want to do quite a traditional colour scheme for Ragnar. So, I'm going to stick quite closely to the colour scheme that they've used in the studio. I think that's quite nice. And uh, I'll be adding him to a nice warm, dusty battlefield display base, which I think will look quite cool. So for the armour, now I quite like my Space Wolves uh, quite pale blue. And this is a kill team that I started a while back. Um, so this is the type of colour that we're going to go for for the armour. This is quite a simple mix uh, because it's for a gaming piece, but we'll be adding in a few extra stages as this is a display piece that we're painting right now. Okay so next I'm gonna move on to Ragnar's face and his hair. Now when I was growing up in the 90s uh, Ragnar Blackmane had blonde hair so I'll be painting my Ragnar with blonde hair as a nod to that. I'm gonna bring that back for his face. I'm gonna go for some quite warm skin tones. Let me just show you this. Okay, so a little earlier I showed you the armour from my kill team as an example. So these are the heads for my kill team. You can see the skin tones. This is pretty much the, what I'm going to go for with Ragnar as well. Minus the uh, ginger hair. Now for the fur, uh, it's such a big area of the model. This is just one little section of it. On his cloak. Uh, I want to go quite dark, so nice warm dark browns or uh, black, which I think will look quite nice. And 
fit in with the original fluff for Ragnar. And picking out details uh, like on his backpack, uh, nice warm golds for the wolf heads, um, and pick out the gemstones in some nice cool blues. Turquoise is my favourite colour, so I like to try and shoehorn it onto a model if I can. The details on his armour, uh, all the little trophies, uh, wolf teeth. I'd like to pick the rune stones out with some OSL maybe. Uh, again, pale blues. All of Ragnar's ammo pouches and holster. Probably pick that out, uh, try, try and do some worn leather. Uh, black or dark brown again for the cloak I forgot to say maybe do it in a deep rich red that always looks quite quite cool now move on to Frostfang his iconic uh, chainsword now I want to be quite true to the original paint job from the 90s so I'm going to be keeping him in a nice rich yellow I'm in two minds whether to do those runes uh, in a cool blue OSL as well and it would be a little bit of a spot colour across the miniature to tie all the areas together but we'll see how brave I'm feeling at the end and lastly his shoulder pad now on the original 90s figure he had a quite a prominent space wolf's head um, that was painted black with yellow mane on a black shoulder pad with gold trim so I noticed the Games Workshop studio have kept the gold trim and the black shoulder pad and then gone with a, a nice gold Ragnar's Company symbol. So I think I'm going to do the same because it looks pretty cool. And then again, maybe pick out those runes at the bottom in a cool blue OSL. So in part two of this paint along, the start of the actual painting, which I know you guys will be uh, keen to get onto. I think we're going to start with the armour. It's a... Uh, such a big part of the model it'll be good to get done as we always try and paint miniatures inside out we can get on with doing all the little fiddly parts like painting the ribbing in between the armor plates get that out of the way before we finish painting the armor itself so we don't get any mistakes later on uh, make it easy for ourselves and that's about it for this video make sure you get your miniature all prepped and ready for next time and i'll see you in part two very soon Right, so I've created a hashtag for everybody to use over on Instagram. If you want to share your progress with me, we can all see what everybody else is doing. Uh, it's hashtag Ragnar Paint Along. And remember, if you guys enjoyed watching this video, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section below. And I'll see you guys back here soon.